Welcome back everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Really appreciate it. It does help. It does keep the channel moving, which is what we want to do. Um, but on to today's thing, final cut, chapters, YouTube, why? Why do you want to? Why do you want to use it? So this is actually a it's been in Final Cut for a while, but it's a new thing that YouTube's started to roll out now that people are starting to use, but why should you use it? Well, let's have a look what chapters are. Chapters allow you to, so let's go to a YouTube screen. You see there's little indents here on the line, and they are the marks of chapters. And they've also got them down here in the description. So the way YouTube works is that if it, the time codes are in the description, it marks it on the thing. Now you must have a zero zero, which is the start of the program. That tells it to look out for the chapters on the way down. Simple as that really. Um, you can't have them within 10 seconds of each other. So they've got to be more than 10 seconds in between a chapter. But it does mean that people can click onto these and go straight to the bit that they want to look at. But why should you do that? Actually, it's quite interesting when you look at the stats for this type of stuff because you can see what people are more interested in. When people jump and go straight to the bits and cut out, you go, yeah, they don't like that so much. We'll cut that out. So if we go to Final Cut, you'll see these little orange markers here. So if I just press M for marker, it puts a blue one by standard. If I double click it, I can select across the top here, which is the standard marker. I can select a to-do, so I can have a to-do list, which is a great thing to have, and I can select chapters. Okay, brilliant, superb. So all of these here are chapter markers, and we put them in. And if I click on index here, I can see all the tags. I've selected it all just to show chapters down the bottom here, and I can see all the chapter markers that are in this. Now, you can embed that into your video when you export, and that's great. But there is a nice little app in case you haven't done that. And if we go and have a look at apps, bum, 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 bum. it's called Creator's Best Friend for Final Cut. Here we go, so we've opened it up. We can literally drag that project, drag it into that window. There you go. It's created it for you. It's tricked all of those out and chopped it in. I can now copy that to clipboard and drop that into my description on YouTube. And if we do that there, pops in any one of those bits, I can jump straight to that section. And there we go. Nice, simple, easy to use. If you don't feel like typing it out or exporting it with your video because you've done it after the fact, great little program. There is a cost to it, I believe. I think it was about nine quid. But from a commercial point of view, that's neither here nor there. If it's just you for yourself, just export it into the video and do it. But I do encourage you to use chapter markers. I think it makes a big difference in, in flexibility for your audience. The fact that they can jump straight to the bit that's relevant to them. It's not relevant for every video. If you're doing a vlog, you might not need to do something like that. But if you're doing a tutorial or anything else, you might people might just want to go straight to that section and to do it. If you've got some nice B-roll, you might want to put a section that jumps people straight to that. So if they get bored of listening to your voice, they can go straight and look at the B-roll. Hope you found that useful, nice, simple, easy to use. I think you should do it. Thumbs up if you enjoyed that. Subscribe for any future bits. Look forward to seeing you soon.